Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another Linux distribution first impressions. Today we are looking at Parsix Linux and Parsix Linux is a Debian based distribution running GNOME 3. It is I believe DistroWatch said an Iranian um, locale Everything is in English though, so for all English uh, speakers and readers, it comes with English installation, and I'm sure it can be put into Middle Eastern locales or whatever local com country you're in. You can set all that stuff up, but it defaults, of course, to English. Parsix Linux, we're running the 5.0, um, 64-bit. If we go into the release notes, we will notice that it is running the 3.8.13 kernel. We have GNOME 3.8.3. Uh, let's see, Ice Weasel is its default browser with Firefox version 23. It did come with Gparted and LibreOffice 354, surprisingly, and maybe this isn't surprising, but you know, after 15 distributions, it's interesting to see something come natively with VirtualBox installed, and that is there. The installation for Parsix Linux went very smoothly. It had a simple live DVD interface. I was unable, however, to put Parsix on a USB stuck and be able to boot from it. I tried many different ways of doing it, including UNet boot, boot in, um, the D, you know, going straight from the command line interface using DD, which is my new favorite way to, to create these. Uh, throwing the ISO directly on the, the USB stuff, all different ways. I got some to boot further than others, but ultimately it failed every single time. However, putting it onto a DVD worked flawlessly. I just hate wasting media when doing DVD installs, and I need to just go ahead and, and spend some money on some DVD um, RWs, maybe, so that I can use those on the, the occasion when I have to absolutely burn it instead of just wasting a DVD. But otherwise, once the DVD booted up, everything seemed to run. The installation process was very straightforward, easy to use, asked a few simple questions. As long as you understand what partitioning is and where you want to put your Linux distro, you can do the rest very easily. The only complaint I had about the installation is it did not give me an opportunity to say, no, I do not want Grub because I have a multiple Linux distribution install of the system. Uh, however, I was at least able to point it to a point or a location that would not interfere with my current settings and mess up my already installed Grub and Grub configuration. So that worked out still. Once I booted in, it welcomed me to this GNOME 3 interface. I have had a few crashes, a few bugs, a few other issues. I'll point out just a few as I go through this review. Um, mainly, uh, when I first got in here, GNOME 3 did not like the Activities file menu. When I first opened up and said, okay, what do I do? This is my first experience with GNOME 3. I went down here and said, okay, Activities. Okay, where's the menu system? There's no menu. All right, well, let's, let's figure out what we do see. Now, this stuff wasn't here because this is what I have open. Um, but I said, okay, files. I want to look at that. Okay, there's my email reader with evolution. Ice Weasel. Okay, that's my file or not file browser. That's my web browser. Console. VLC. Now, I installed SSR, so that's there now. Otherwise, it went then to show applications. All right, I can find my applications. Now, the very first time I went into here, it was on frequent. And there was absolutely nothing there because no one had ever used the system before. And I said, okay, what do I do? Oh, okay, here's a frequent, here's an all. Let's click on all. When I clicked on all, I had my first crash immediately within five minutes of having the system up and running. And it said, oops, something went wrong, and it logged me out and went back into the login screen. I tried it again, and it repeated the exact same thing. I said, okay, this is no good. I can't figure out what's on here. If I type search for, I was trying to figure out how to install software and check that out. I was just typing in synaptic, aptitude, packages, install, nothing that was coming up, and 
eventually I tried there was an option inside of the GDM the GNOME desktop manager for when you log in to go to GNOME Classic I thought oh maybe that will give me GNOME 2 it did not give me GNOME 2 however it did make it so that the menu started to work and since then I've gone back into the other option and everything seems to be working better now so I'm not sure what that hiccup was but it's okay now when I went to all I finally found that okay no synaptic no aptitude no nothing with package names but here the very first option I see add remove software and that worked out well to be able to try to install software another thing that you will note is that I do not have my GUVC viewer up and running to have the webcam working no matter what I did whether it was upgrading the codex FFmpeg the GUVC to the newest version using cheese which did come with the system things it, I just could not get the webcam to work properly it was spritzing out screwing up everything but work correct so I just decided we're just gonna go with the screen capture and uh, you'll just have to listen to me just think of this as the radio with your host Dos Gregor giving you the best of the Linux OS's that are out there and enough of that <clears throat> so within the add remove software it was very simple to just start trying to find things within the menus over here or to type them in like GUVC hit find and it should find something hopefully maybe querying there we go now I did update the repositories manually so that I could try out 1.7 it initially came with 1.5 I thought maybe an older version was giving me trouble. 1.7 say it gave me the same issues. That was not the problem. I also was able to install the entire KDE desktop from there by going in here and doing a search on a few um, things with KDE and finding the full version of that that I could just click on like a meta package and it gave me everything. That worked out well except for when I went into KDE. Uh, a lot of my applications were duplicated. A lot of problems were uh, the system just did not like what I was doing but after a reboot it just kinda cleared itself up and cleaned itself up and then things seem to run much more smoothly um, another issue I will mention is that I have gone into you know I try to change things so it's local to where I am you know I'm, I'm at within the world and I went here and said oh okay I can set my date and time settings click on that I go in here and it says oh wow it thinks I'm in London all right, no worries. I'm gonna unblock this and type in my password, and let's see if we can get this on the first try. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe no, a little bit north. There. How about that? Ah, oh, I'm off by 300 miles. No, no, no. I'm worse. There. There we go. All right, now I'm in the right spot. I'm not gonna worry about setting this stuff because it doesn't work. That's my whole point. It's not gonna work. Now I don't see an apply button. I don't see an OK button. I don't see anything here that would tell me what to do next other than to lock these features so I lock them and I go ahead and close this because there's nothing else because if I go here it's gonna take me to the settings and there's nothing in here of course to say to apply so I close it out if I go back into there to check to make sure everything's proper because I never saw the date and time change it still says it's 1305 which is incorrect hey look I'm back in London again now call me stupid but I have set the local time at the command line interface I have set the configuration files to point to the right place I have set things to get rid of UTC clock and to point it to my local uh, time zone and nothing I have done has fixed this issue I even went into KDE and did it through there and it's funny because in KDE it finally says that I'm in America in the Arizona location but then it still doesn't have the right time settings and it's still showing me London time for some reason so I gave up with that I, I ran into a few other problems with administration such as I wanted to uh, update the repositories and if I remember right what I would do is I'd go into synaptic package manager throw my quick password in there and 
I thought all you had to do is go to settings and repositories and you'd be able to set those. But every time I do, it says the repository information has changed. If you reload, then you'll get the move effects, blah, 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 blah. Click close, reload. It does my downloads, but it never gives me the option or lets me go into the settings to configure the repositories. The only way I could fig configure the repositories was to manly, manually edit them in the command line interface. Now, I don't remember having to do that anywhere else before within Debian distributions, uh, but that seems to be the way it is with Parsix. Now, you ask, why did I choose Parsix? I chose Parsix because a subscriber has requested that I take a look at it and do a first impressions video. Otherwise, normally I would never ever get involved with GNOME 3. I am not a fan of GNOME 3. I don't like the direction that the developers have gone for GNOME 3. I don't mean to start a flame war about this, and I don't want a bunch of negative comments. If you are a GNOME 3 user, we all have our own opinions. We have our own likes and dislikes. At one time, I was very upset with the direction that KDE 4 was going because when we went from KDE 3 to a very stable, likable flavor of KDE to the KDE 4.0, I thought it was rubbish myself and got really upset with the way how any bugs, how they'd undone so many things that I really liked how it worked in KDE 3. So I started looking around for a different UI and I found GNOME and I'd known about GNOME for a while. I just hadn't used it because I kind of thought it wasn't as candy-fied or whatever you want to look at as say KDE could be. But I started using it again and started saying, hey, I really like this. And about that time GNOME 3 was talk was being talked about uh, coming out and I thought, hey, yeah, yeah can't wait because you know, I'm liking this GNOME a lot. Then 3.0 came out and I went, blah! this sucks and honestly I mean, they've tried to improve it I mean I can't believe they're 3.8 and I still think it sucks but that's my opinion that's all that is I think it's absolute rubbish I went back you know luckily you know KDE has done a lot to improve and you know, now they're up to 4.10.5 and it works really well I'm really impressed with what they've done to fix it KDE has listened to its audience and users and done what they like. Where I feel GNOME developers have just decided this is the way we're going to go and we don't care what you think. Parsec seems to be a pretty decent OS. Things have worked well since I kind of got the bugs worked out. I still don't like the fact that I'm having a lot of uh, configuration problems and it's kind of difficult to get in there and get those things to work. I did notice it did not have anything to do with whether I was running GNOME 3 because I ran into the same problems within KDE. Um, it just is what it is. Otherwise, simple uh, distro to install. I was very much impressed with, with its uh, setup utility. I like those. I like it when they don't make it difficult and scary to put a Linux distribution on a machine and they did an excellent job at that. Maybe because this just came out just a few days ago, um, a little over a week, week and a half, something like that. There might be still a few bugs in it, and that's maybe what I'm running into with this. So I don't want to say anything negative about that. I didn't, I've never looked at their older stable version 4.03, so it would be interesting to see with that if it's uh, if they kind of had it more hard, um, hard coded or, or, or just better off. Who knows? We'll see. Until next time, I appreciate your views. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the support that everybody has given me. I hope you enjoy this. Please look at my older videos and see what's out there. I have a lot. Uh, this is, I think, my 15th Linux distribution in 15 weeks so far. My goal is to go 52 distributions in 52 weeks. I hope I can meet that. There are plenty of distributions to look at. There are more than 52 out there. There are hundreds if you go to DistroWatch, and I just want to pick a few here and there. I try to do uh, suggestions or requests if they're asked. Otherwise, I just go in and pick, pick one that looks neat and just go for it. We'll see how that goes. I'm trying to talk a little bit faster, so if you're actually still listening to me and you haven't shut me off by now, um, people have said that I talk a little bit too slow and put them to sleep. I've had some people say that I am a great fix for insomnia, so let's hope that's not the case in all the time, but 
Yeah, it is what it is, and I will try to be a little bit faster with some of these things and not talk so much. Until next time, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having and have it, enjoy it. Thank you very much for your views, and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.